Have coverage on the left, left-hander Steve Westberg going against Tom Baker. Baker will shoot first, averaging on this championship pair 234 and a half, Westberg 233. Here's a man that uh, takes plenty of time, and uh, right now he's giving him the long stare down the approach and down the lanes. Tom Baker of Buffalo, New York, who in six years as a PBA member has four titles to his credit. 12, 300 games during his career. First shot. And the man in green from Buffalo leaves the two pen on the left lane, Bo. Chris, we can see Baker with that methodical style. He's a slow rolling ball. He uses a slow approach and he likes that inside line somewhere between the third and fourth arrow. And this type of condition really fits him. I mean, there's something you see right there. His weight is 150. At one time, Tommy Baker weighed 235 before went going into training for pro bowling. Very smooth delivery. Smooth stroke, knocking down the two pin. Marking with a spare in the first frame, and now, first time today, 32-year-old Steve Westberg of Cottage Grove, Oregon. Five years in the PBA. He has... Uh, three titles, and he said he got here by staying consistent. Well, a crossover, uh, leaving the seven pin on the right lane for the lefty. Well, I think a little bit of the jitters got both players, and Westberg pulled the ball up high, almost crossing over into the right-hander's pocket, the one three, and Tommy Baker threw it wide on the first frame. But I think once they settle down, I think we can really be in for a treat today, Chris, in the scoring department. All right. Sure, why not have a 300, we hope. Uh-oh. You saw it. Replay of the shot now. Westberg just didn't trust either shot. The first shot he pulled high, got a little good break, and only left the seven pin. Then he didn't send the ball out wide enough and just pulled it right by. It would have made the four seven, but not the single pin itself. He trails by 11 after only one frame. Steve uh, Westberg. Oregon is trying to win his first match on television over uh, a five-year period. And that low crouch to the line. There. All right. One of three left-handers has marked with a, a strike in the second frame, and Tom Baker is up. Chris, we're using 21 and 22 in this 32-lane bowling center for us in Missouri, suburb north of St. Louis. And the characteristic of the pair is simply the same for right-handers and left-handers. The left-hand lane is a little tighter, doesn't finish as much. The right-hand lane, both the righties and the lefties say, is ideal. Can't be. The nine pin. Chris, that... It's unbelievable. We talked about the great pin action. This is the first time I've ever seen it in a championship round on ABC. Watch the ball. Inter With this Just select one coat ceiling latex. They're your choice, just $8.98 a gallon during President's Day paint values at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Shooting in the fifth frame. Nope, leaves the 10. While we were away in the fourth frame, he left a three pin, covered it for a spare in the fourth frame. Now he'll have to knock down the 10 for a spare in the fifth frame. Tight match. Everybody seems to be pulling in slow motion out there, Chris. I don't know whether it's the heat or in the building or what. You know, Earl's normally very fast, and he's even taking a little extra time. Blue-eyed Susie Anthony. Earl's Valentine. Huh. Well, we have some Valentines on ABC uh, tomorrow. One of your good friends, Peggy Fleming's on, isn't she, Chris? Oh, great show in Wide World. From concept to curtain call, Peggy Fleming. That's tomorrow. Don't miss it. Beautiful show. High hit and the 6 7 10 for Tom Baker. 
Baker with that slow speed just has that ball get away from him. Apparently he adjusted on the right lane, uh, figuring it's the same as the left, that it was tighter. But I know this pair of lanes very well, Chris. I live here, I bowl in Dick Weber's house quite a bit. And it, regardless of how well these players bowl all week, this, in my opinion, is one of the tougher pairs in the house. And the characteristic is simply the right-hand lane always hooked a lot more than the left-hand lane. It's showing up today. Tom Baker going for it, leading the seven. So with that open frame, he's trailing by 13. And he's meeting Earl Anthony. The winner of this second game will meet left-hander Mike Albee from Indianapolis. Then the winner of the semifinal will go against Bill Straub, the Rolades Open Tournament leader. Baker, you see that little hole in the side of his ball? That's a weight hole, and he took out some of the positive weight to keep the ball from hooking so much at the back end. Founder of the Professional Bowlers Association, attorney Eddie Elias. To know him is to love him. Well, he's so brilliant. He's just uh, so refreshing to be around with his uh, wit and with his uh, excellent expertise in almost any field you want to talk about. And in bowling, none finer. Earl Anthony. Oh, a little disbelief on that face with the seven pin standing on the right lane. This is the solid seven. Now watch the four pin. That's the pin, the second one on the left side of your screen. It goes flying around the top of the seven pin. And that's one of the things that we thought we wouldn't see much of today. We said the pins would stay lower so that one belly of the pin would meet the other, less taps. We've seen a few taps so far today in the early going. All right, it came back up for a spare. We had an opportunity earlier to ask Earl what he sees as the main difference between lacquer and urethane conditions. I think the biggest difference for me between urethane and, uh, say, a lacquer condition for me personally is that on urethane, I definitely have to throw a little harder and I use a polyester bowling ball. Uh, to get the good reaction on the back end. On uh, lacquer condition, I use basically rubber equipment and don't have to throw quite as hard. I keep the ball on a line longer, and I think I carry a little better on lacquer conditions. All right. And Earl Anthony and his fans with a 12-pin lead, a strike, and the seventh going to leave live action because we're running behind, but we'll bring you up to date when we return, in which we will right after this message. Finally, after years of development, the makers of Neosinephrine are proud to introduce even longer-lasting relief for your stuffy nose. Introducing new Neosinephrine 12 Hour. Absolutely nothing you can buy is stronger or lasts longer than new Neosinephrine 12 Hour. You can breathe freely all day. Get new Neosinephrine 12 Hour. Nothing is stronger. Nothing lasts longer. This is where you come to be really refreshed. For a taste so cool, so delicious, it could only be Velaments. For a taste so fresh, it takes your breath away. Great taste that only happens here. Velaments. Great taste that's always cool and clear. Cool refreshment. That's the Velaments taste. Great taste that only happens here, Velaments. We're back again in Florissant, Missouri. While we were away in the seventh frame, Tom Baker bowled a strike to double and cut the lead to two pins. Now here in the eighth frame, as you see, he has left the two five on his first ball. The characteristic of the lanes is showing up for both righties and lefties. The left-hand lane holds a lot longer. You have to throw the ball a little slower. The right-hand lane, you got to pick up the speed. Yeah. All right. Beautiful spare by Tom Baker. So now Earl Anthony will be shooting in the eighth with a strike working for him. And he has a four-pin advantage right now. Going out to a 14-10 lead. 
Anthony's starting to put it all together, kicks a 14-pin lead with that double, and uh, he's well on his way to doing what he did last year, uh, defeating Tommy Baker on the Royal Aids Finals. The style we've seen so many times. The, the great thing about Earl is a steady head. Look at that head it's right there. Now, as he comes through, watch it won't even hardly feather his, uh, his hair as he comes through the ball. It's so smooth. That's great control. Strike in the ninth frame, the foundation for a three-bagger. Earl Anthony finding the pocket. Tommy Baker with his back to the wall now is in a must-strike situation. He trails by 24. The best score he can shoot is 213. Right now, Anthony's going at a 217 pace. Frame a strike for Tom Baker, who won the first game over Steve Westberg, 218 to 192. Baker must strike on this ball. If he doesn't strike anything uh, less than a foul or a uh, ball in the channel by Anthony, Baker would lose. So he has to strike here to force Anthony to get a good count and a mark in the tenth. And should that happen, we'd have a semifinal with two left-handers. Leaving the 4 7. Open frame in the fifth frame of the second game. It's all over for Bakes to, uh, today. He's had a good week, had a big average, but the best he can do right here as this ball cuts through and just avoids the 4 7 10 split is 193. Earl Anthony, even if he doesn't mark, will be in the 200s. 4 7. Breathing room now for Earl Anthony. But he's going to meet a young Tiger, youngest in the field of five, 21 year old Mike Albee. Four years of PBA member and four titles. So for Tom Baker, it's a 193. Anthony, all he has to do is keep it on the lane, stay behind the foul line on this shot, and he'll go on to meet young Mike Albee, who has always given Anthony trouble in the championship round. This could be a great match. Oh, Earl keeps his screen going at three. He is the winner of our second match. We'll have that final score for you. So coming up from Florissant, Missouri, at the Dick Weber Lanes in the Rolaids Open, it'll be Anthony against Albee. When you shoot a lot of pool and bars, you want to stay fast and loose, and you don't want to get filled up. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, the taste is great. And even though a lot of people don't think pool is strenuous, let me tell you something. You can work up a real good thirst, even when you're just showing off. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Ah, new car! Chevy Chevette? Must have cost a fortune for the fancy wheels and white striped tires. Standard, Father. Radio. Reclining seats. <laughs> on your salary. Standard, Father. Along with front disc brakes and radial tires. And these fancy stripes? $89 extra. And why would you spend $89 on stripes? The devil made me do it. Oh. Now get a $500 cash bonus on Chevette to apply to your down payment or in a check direct from Chevrolet. It'll never work. We're testing whether Tegrin can keep Lisa's dandruff under control for three days. Okay, Lisa, give it the Tegrin shake. Looks terrific, but it's only one day. Tegrin shake, day two, Lisa. Wow, Tegrin's on the job, but there's tomorrow. Day three. Let's see that Tegrin shake. Hey, I'm really impressed. Tegrin, I'm sorry I doubted you. Try Tegrin. It works. Really works. Between shampoos. Here in Missouri, we're showing you just how the first two games ended. Baker defeating Westbrook, 218 to 192, and now Earl Anthony moving up, defeating Baker, 226 to 193. This is the seventh year of the Rolaids Open here in Florissant, Missouri. Cherry sponsor, but 
Each week, they're here with the Roll Aids tip of the week. Today, Nelson Burton Jr., the 247 and the 3610 splits. Watch, you'll enjoy it. The professional bowling tip of the week is brought to you by Roll Aids. Today's tip involves spares with the head pin knocked down. Two of these spares most frequently left are the 247 combination on the left side of the lane and the 3610 combination on the right side of the lane. Although these spares are on opposite sides of the lane, they do have one thing in common. In order to convert them in spot bowling, you use the third arrow. They do have one big difference. For spares on the left side of the lane, such as the 247, you move your body to the right side on the approach. For spares on the right side of the lane, such as the 3610, you move your body to the left side on the approach. Remember, for spares on the left side of the lane, such as the 247, move to the right on the approach and use the third arrow. For spares on the right side of the lane, move to the left side of the approach and roll the ball over the third arrow. The Dallas Morning News, 3 a.m. You know this crew gets heartburn, and when they do, there's no time to stop. No wonder so many people take Rolaids, the tablet that gives millions 100% relief. Like a sponge, Rolaids antacid medicine consumes 100% of the acid required to give millions 100% relief. With Rolaids, you can keep going. Rolaids. Rolaids spells 100% relief. Here's the stats for the Rolaids open so far. Total purse 115,000, a small field, a record average to catch 225.5, and top 24, 230. Amazing. And some of the other 24 finishers, you see Holman tapped two weeks in a row, led the tournament. Mickey Hyam from Kansas City, always tough. There are some other players. Daryl Bauer snuck in right at the end. Mike Durbin, our statistician, up there consistently every week. Ed Ressler Jr. looking good. Fred Connors, glad to see him come out of his slump. Tough Frank Allenberg, Barry Warshavsky right up there, a steady bowler. Acosta, Cranker, Tommy Milton from uh, Florida looks good. Slick as usual is always up there. Roth, 20th. I thought he'd finish higher than that. Guppy True, Paul, the Eagle, Dale Glenn, and Jeff Morin round out the top 24. All right, now we're ready for the semifinal match. Two left-handers, the great Earl Anthony against a great young bowler named Mike Albee. Albee is 21 years old from Indianapolis, Indiana. Youngest man ever to win the PBA National Championship when he defeated Anthony, 245 to 217 in Las Vegas, 1979, when he was 19. And he's an aggressive player, Chris. He goes after him. I like his style. Got a break, leaving the 610 on the left lane. I met this young Mike Albee about four years ago, Chris, three or four years ago, when he was uh, traveling around bowling the regional tournaments. Uh, PBA has a number of regional tournaments around the country, and Mike, not being a touring pro at the time, used to bowl in the headquarters region, his home in uh, Indianapolis, and then come down here to the tough Midwestern region here in St. Louis, and uh, every once in a while give us quite a tussle. And the young man that rolled eight 300 games in a six-month span which was recorded in Ripley's, believe it or not, has opened with a spare. This is where Earl starred the record championship round scores. He won eight consecutive matches in the championship round starting right here one year ago. He's already won one today. The man that got his Sporting News Player of the Year award just last night here in St. Louis. Here's a tremendous shot, Chris. The only man in the bowling that I know releases a ball like this. Watch Earl Anthony's thumb. It doesn't rotate like the other players. It comes out and does not move at all, and yet the fingers go around the side of the ball. I never had really seen it that close until I had seen a shot like that, and uh, another lefty, Johnny Petraglia, who had studied Anthony Styles over the years, made me aware of it, and it's a tremendous asset to have that type of release. And Earl left the 10 pin. He won the match over Baker. If you just joined us, 226 to 193. In our first game, Baker defeated Steve Westberg, 218 to 192. Earl Anthony, uh, not stringing the strikes, but very strong at the end of the last game, is, is zeroed in on the pocket. It's just a matter of touch right now. A little slower on the left lane, a little more speed on the right. Cross lane, very smoothly. Covers a big part of the 10 pin giving him 20 through the first with a spare up. All even as Albee is up, he'll be shooting in the second. 
spare and Bill Straub, six foot five inch tournament leader is warming up. You hear the pens dropping from time to time. Ooh, was that a powerful strike? Albie bowls much more like a right-hander than many of the other left-handers. He plays inside, he cranks that ball up, notice his wrist is cocked back there, then he turns the ball inside out as he lets go of it and actually plays the inside line much more often than, uh, than many left-handers do. Many of the lefties opt for that outside line, similar to what Anthony's playing. Albie, because of his power and hook, has to move more towards the center of the lane, is a very versatile player. Yeah. Young man that had a 300 game yesterday in the fifth round. Leaving the 3-6 at the strike up. Well, it looks like the player that can hit the left-hand lane is going to be our winner, Chris. We see a characteristic usually show up every week, and this week it's the slickness or the tightness of the left-hand lane that seemed to stop all the players so far from getting a big game. Jim Albee, uh, Mike's dad, who's been very instrumental in his learning, and uh, has helped him over the years. A really a super nice guy. And always makes the trip when Mike gets into our televised championship finals. Now Anthony, he'll be shooting in the third frame. He opened with a strike, marked with a spare. Third in the U.S. Open, only major title that he's failed to win. That was in Houston. He strives to win another step toward the one million dollars. Here's the countdown to the one million. You see, in 63, nothing. <laughs> and he went on with a whopping 164,000 last year, 967. So he is, well, 32,000, 14 dollars short of the mark. He can achieve it this month if he uh, does or duplicates what he did in 1981. but the 10 pin on the left lane. Bowler of the decade in the 70s. Anthony hitting light in the one two pocket head pin going to the sideboard and almost takes out the five six ten and that's the hit we've been seeing carry all week long. But unfortunately they nobody's been able to put it together and get the big string. So it's a spare in the forest for Earl Anthony as we leave live action to try to make up some time. We'll bring you up to date when we return, which we will after this commercial. Right guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why right guard solid has an action triggered formula. Trigger to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right Guard Action Triggered Formula helps keep you dry and odor free all day. Right Guard Anti Perspirant Solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. If you're wondering where you stand on your family insurance, the State Farm Family Insurance Checkup will make you feel better. It reviews your family insurance. Homeowners, auto, life, and health. There's no obligation, nothing to pay for the service, and the people I talk to say they're glad to find out what protection they have. Talk to your State Farm agent about the family insurance checkup. It can make you feel a lot better, too. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Next, Olympic champ Michael Spinks puts his world right heavyweight title on the line against the first-ranked contender. And pool champions are behind the eight ball for trick shot wizardry. ABC's Wide World of Sports is next. Wide World next right now. We're back live. Mike Albee marked with a spare in the fourth frame. Shooting here in the fifth. He had left a solid eight on the right lane. Covered it. Now on the left lane. Problem lane still, Bo. All the players are not getting the ball up to the pocket on the left lane, and it's still that subtle fear of when you move that extra board or two to the left to adjust for the left hand that you would go high and get a split. He's still right in the match. And remember, this is match play. Why take a big chance and blow the match when you're still very close?
pair in the fifth for Mike Alby. Two pins separating these two winners. Earl Anthony using the rubber ball today on this lacquer finish, and Mike Alby using a urethane-based ball on this finish. Both seem to score very well. Third strike, and this is the semifinal game. Susie Anthony. Earl had five in his victory over Tom Baker, 226 to 193 here. Now he can up it to 12. This could be a pivotal frame for Anthony because nobody's hitting the left-hand lane, and to put some pressure on Albie right now would really get him on his way to get into the title match against Rob. Looking for the first strike on the left lane. There it is. Next week, the True Value Open at Ray Becker's Lanes in Peoria. Watch the head pin work over the 5, 6, 10. Now, see how bouncy those pins are? Three pound, two ounce pins. That ball hit, that pin hit in the channel and bounced up almost over the top of the 6 and the 10. A tremendous action. Mike now is down 12 pins. He has a spare working, shooting in the 6th frame. cashed in every event on the 1982 tour. First championship round appearance. But he was 10th at Anaheim, 30th in Las Vegas, 41st in Alameda, 19th in Grand Prairie, and last week he was 8th. A little re-rack here, huh? Well, Chris, the machine knocked over the mm -hmm. six pin, and uh, naturally you cannot be aided by any of the mechanical equipment uh, to aid your pinfall. Now, if a pin would happen to fly up in the machine as the ball impacts it, it's fine. That's normal pin action. Or if a pin would fly back out and hit the rake while it was down, that's normal pin action. But mm -hmm. to have the ball dead in the, in the pit and then have a pin come back or a machine knock a pin over has to be reset. Six. <laughs> All right, earlier we got Mike's reaction why he switched from a 15-pound ball to a 16-pound ball. I used a 15-pound ball because I can a little more relaxed and I could do more with the ball what I wanted to. Uh, I switched to the 16 because I started throwing a 15-pound ball a little harder, overpowering it, and not getting the ball reaction and the hit on the pins that I wanted, so that's why I switched to the 16. But Chris, he's been the first player that's been successful with the 15. We saw two players last week uh, use the 15-pound ball, Houston and Anthony. Now, each left-hander has a strike on that left lane of this championship pair. Let's replay the shot. No doubt about this one. He's made the adjustment to the left on the approach, got the ball solid in the pocket. Bingo. All in the pit. Anthony now, 13-pin lead. He's got a double working, shooting in the seventh of this semifinal game. <laughs> Living the 4-7. Earl looks like he's almost too relaxed. Uh, he's very comfortable out there in a the championship round. As you know, he's been there so many times, but he was almost too relaxed on it. I was watching, the, watching him stroke, and he almost didn't put any speed or power on it, just like a shadow ball, and got a good break and only left the 4-7 and avoided the split. with a spare in the seventh frame. Five-step delivery of Anthony. Watch how smooth and methodical is. Each step's a little bigger than the next, gaining momentum, good knee bend, foot perpendicular to the foul line. Anthony now, who eliminated Tom Baker and has an 11-pin lead. Spare up shooting in frame number eight. strike on that left lane now it's the oh golly three five six nine Anthony with the bucket is left this match wide open these two players have had great matches over the years and I'll tell you the truth I think Albies had a little of the better of Anthony over the years and Anthony has given him an opening with this very tough spare to convert the three five six nine here's his shot Gets him. Earl Anthony who came from third 
position last year to win the Rolates Open. Started in third today. Ah, next week, the True Value Open, Peoria, Illinois. It'd be nice to see Ray Becker again in a great establishment. That's 150000 Then we go to Toledo for the big one, the PBA National Championship. On to Miami, the Sunshine Open. Bo, I know you'll welcome that. Well, we're ready to see Eisen and the boys down there. Then out to Fairlanes to see Bob Hawks and the players out there at Fairlanes. Oh, even though it was an extremely high hit, look at that smile on 21-year-old Mike Albee. Replay the shot. What a great break he got. He crossed over, pulled the ball. The two-pin oh. went to the sideboard, tripped out to 4-7. And it, what a great time to catch it. He could have, he took the lead with that shot, and he could have been disaster for him if he had cut right through and left a split. Now he's in the driver's seat. Double looks strong up there, doesn't it? An important thing in match play is to take advantage of break, whether it's in bowling or golf or anything, Chris. As you well know, even in football, you have to shove it in when you get a break. This is an important shot for Albie to win this match and take advantage of that crossover. His dad approves. Wow. Show you what a big difference it is. If, if he gets a split on that lucky crossover that he got in the eighth frame, it'll have been a 34 pin difference in his score. Right now, he leads by 13. If he had got a split, he'd have been trailing by 21. What an amazing break. Now, in the ninth frame, it is Earl Anthony. Spare working. Stay smooth and oh how effective as Earl comes up to the 10th frame the situation is simply this he must strike on this ball to force Albie into a strike situation Anthony can still win the match force Albie to strike Mike Albie taking a piece of adhesive tape putting in his thumb hole just to make sure he gets a good grip on the ball a lot of players hands shrink a little bit as they're bowling Anthony was, is just such a confident player, Chris. You've picked it up over the years. They're in a, just a critical situation. He just stroked the nicest, smoothest shot down there like he was just going out to practice on a Sunday afternoon, and he's right back in the match. With this strike, he'll take the lead. Looking ahead to next week, it was last winter. Mike was in the, against Anthony in Peoria. Finished fifth, losing to Earl. Five ten, five ten replay. Earl expected a better break than that. He left the five ten. Actually, the rack is tight. Look at the one and two pins. That rack was real tight. What I mean by that is the pins were very close together. They're within tolerance, but when they're closer together, it's hard to penetrate into the five pin to carry it out. So Anthony still has a possible two twelve. Two eleven. Two eleven for Earl Anthony. Semifinal game. He is hot. Great competitor. But he's again against Mike Albee, and they have had some battles Albie in the needs, last four years. Albee needs a mark and a good count to win the match. Still needs a good count. If he opens, Anthony is the winner. If he gets a bad count, like a five count, we could have a tie, or he could lose. A strike would be a winner. He's some competitor. Mike Albee and his dad. The approving smile of his father. And Albee has really, really been tough on Anthony over the years. I think Albee came out with the idea that he's a left-hander. He uh, idolizes Anthony to a certain extent. But he told me, if, if I want to get to the top, i got to beat number one. He has concentrated, I think, over the years, whether he wants to admit it or not, of bearing down a little harder against Anthony. He's had good success because nobody gets the better of that man very long. And leaving, excuse me, a 4-8 on the right lane. And, of course, Mike Albee, one step closer to the $17,000 first prize. He'll go against Bill Straub. That'll be the match coming up as we pause now. Word from the sponsors and station ID. Come on, I'm buying. 
Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. Working late again, Mr. Peabody? I'm afraid so, Rose. You were the genius who designed the Firestone 721 tire. That's my problem. They want me to top it. Top it? But isn't the 721 what they call a, a winner? Oh, sure. It's got seven around two wrapped by one. There's 24 million on the road, you know. And you're gonna top that, Mr. P? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> The Firestone 721. It's one tough tire to top. Sunday, Burt Reynolds and Sally Field drive the cops crazy in Smokey and the Bandit. craziness is to you. Check out the prices on quality sound and video equipment at Wild West Sound. It's insane! Look at this car stereo department. Why, you can make your car sound just like a home. Oops, bad choice of words. <laughs> and look at all this video stuff. I just love working on tape. <laughs> Turntables, amplifiers, tape decks, and prices that are just crazy! World of Survival, Sunday afternoons at 5.30. We'll be back for that final match. First, more good skiing news from Europe for the Americans. The American women's ski team coming off that spectacular four-medal performance last week at the World Alpine Championships at Schladming today continued its best season ever as Holly Beth Flanders of Massachusetts and Cindy Nelson of Minnesota finished 1-2 in the World Cup downhill race at Arosa, Switzerland. It's terrific. Flanders, who just beat out Nelson by 28 one hundredths of a second for first place, took over the lead in the overall women's downhill racing standings with an 84-79 point lead over Marie-Cécile Gros-Gadagne of France. Cindy Oak of Orchard Park, New York, by the way, rounded out the strong American showing at Arosa, finishing sixth. In the overall women's World Cup standing, Erica Hess, 14 points ahead of Irina Epla, but then Kristen Cooper of the United States and Cindy Nelson. Now let's go back to the bowling, the final match in Chris Schenker. Thank you, Jim. And this is what has happened thus far. Baker winning the first, Anthony defeating Baker. Mike Albee now has defeated Earl Anthony. So in the final, Mike Albee goes against part-time pro Bill Straub, first championship round appearance this year. And this is our final match, 17000 to the winner, $9,500 to the runner-up. Look at the size of the tournament leader, 6'5", 255, 30 years old, from the capital city of Lincoln, Nebraska. And what a powerful bowling ball he has. And lofting it out on the lanes and getting a strike. Credit to Bill Straub. You know, he, as tournament leader, gets six practice balls while we're away in a commercial message, Chris, and Albie gets none. They challenge her to try, to try to equalize the match between the tournament leader and the contender. But Albie, uh, I'm sorry, Straub didn't get any strikes on the left-hand lane. He starts with one in the match. Crossing over, got a break, leaving the two. Mike Albie on the right lane, who won the match over Anthony 225 to 211. Goes right through the heart and gets a break. Doesn't get the 2-7 split. Knocks the 7 pin out. Look at that bouncing pin. <laughs> That's really <laughs> made. You know, years ago, Chris, when they used to use wood pins, uh, boy, you'd never see them bounce like that. They lay down and die, mm -hmm. which means it's a lot tougher to knock down. So Mike Alvey here in the final match. The roll aids open has marked with a spare. Mike, the 21-year-old from Indianapolis, has a special guest here tonight today Jason McGammon and Jason's mother and father Jason young fellow that unfortunately had brain surgery and Mike's been right in his corner rooting him all the way Mike always always generous with his time in fact in St. Charles Missouri which is just west of St. Louis area he went out and bowled a muscular uh, dystrophy benefit this week Chris and there 
there he is with a strike. And Mike rolled an 802 three game series in that event. Here's Ray a, Blue's a great one. Here's a Hall of Famer that's one of the great St. Louis Bowlers. And, you know, I asked him what the difference between the Bowlers of his era and the Bowlers of our era right now, Chris. And he said on the lacquer, you couldn't get away with the big hook ball that uh, guys like Straub use. And, and, and on the urethane finishes, you had to go down and in. But on lacquers, you had to go the, the big straight down in shot. Boy, he, he looks overpowering, doesn't he? A double opening up this final match. Open up he did, Chris. He opened the rack up on that. Now watch the, the tremendous wrist action of Bill Straub. 6'5", 250 pounds, and just tremendous uplift with that wrist. He just snaps the wrist right through the ball, counterclockwise around it. I really don't think there's anybody who can knock the pins down any better than Straub when he gets to the pocket. Now he's on the left line, third frame, double up. He wasn't sure after he released that shot, but talk about power, explosion. He came to play, and he's got a leg up on getting back into uh, the Firestone Bowling's third jewel of the Triple Crown. He is not eligible because he's not a touring pro, but if he wins here, he'll be in the Firestone and knock out Jay Robinson, who's now sitting in 52nd place on the eligibility list. Making sure that he doesn't run away too far. Albie with the double now. That's strike in the third. Solid as can be. Albie's fished a little bit on the right-hand lane, and now he seems to have found it, and both players are in the pocket. It's just who can be the toughest in the last seven frames. Here's the release of Mike Albie. You see his hand going around the ball, and a little different than Earl Anthony. You saw the thumb rotate down and inwards, where Anthony's just stayed stationary. Albie with the stronger of the two balls between the left-handers, but Anthony with a little more accuracy. All but the three pen on that pesky left lane for Mike Albee. And seated right behind Mike Albee is uh, one of the another strong guys uh, like Bill Straub, the linebacker for the St. Louis Cardinals, Tim Kearney, a bowling fan and quite a powerful guy. He's a good friend of mine. You know, he once wrestled a, a bear, Chris, and mm -hmm. whipped him. <laughs> He's quite a speaker, too, at banquets. All right. Bill Straub, the tournament leader, leading Mike Albee by 11 pins. There will be more following this break. Where's the birthday, boy? It's a special day in a child's life. All too quickly gone. But it will never be forgotten, thanks in part to the miracle of flash photography. And this strong, ultra-clear plastic, invented by Philips Petroleum, that helps make flash bars possible. You mean you don't like bones? It's just a little thing. Well, how about that? But then, little things can bring joy to life. Caring for your car and more. That's performance from Phillips Petroleum. Way to go, guys. I'm Bobby Hull. I played it rough for 23 years with the big guys. I used Absorbing Junior then for my sore aching muscles, and believe me, I still do. Absorbing Junior really loosens up stiff, hurting muscles. Just rub Absorbing Junior in. That warmth soaks right down to help relieve those sore, aching muscles. Get yourself some Absorbing Junior. I call it the sore muscle medicine. That's right, coming up next, Wide World of Sports Championship Boxing and Trick Shot Pool. Bill Straub. Straub. <laughs> Bill Straub left a 10-pin, Chris, converted, and he's mm -hmm. leading by 10 pins, fifth frame. And uh, leaving a four on that left lane for the right-hander. Straub is so powerful that the one thing he has to watch is uh, when he gets in a situation where uh, he's a little nervous or something, is not to try to overpower the ball. It's still a touch sport, and you have to keep that power in control. That particular shot, he just jumped all over it, almost got the 4-9 split. On this championship pair, Bill averaged 262. Wow. Yeah. Goes for it and gets it. There in the fifth frame as Albie is up to shoot. Youngest man in the field at 21. Defeating Earl Anthony, if you just join us. Previous game, 225 to 211. Before that, Anthony defeated Baker with a 226. And in the first game, Baker defeated Steve Westberg, 
218 to 192. Two seven. Mike is still losing that ball off his hands, and it's quite hot down there. And uh, the ball just slips off your hand. It's the worst feeling in the world in bowling, and you just can't control it. You try to get some lift on it, you try to squeeze it, but it changes, tightens your muscles up, and he's in a real difficult situation. We saw him changing the tape in his thumb hole in the earlier match, and he got through that match with uh, Earl Anthony, but now he's in trouble against Big Bill Straub. Oh, he thought he had it. Leaving the twos, we replay the stroke. Westberg in an earlier match uh, didn't give it enough room, and he knocked out the two pin. Albie a little wide, knocks out the seven. Neither one of the players have been able to convert the baby split for the left-hander, the two seven, and Albie's in trouble after five frames, down by 22. Albie nine inches shorter on the approach than his opponent, Straub. Mike Albee leaves the 6-8, but yet the three pin comes to the sideboard and knocks out the six, and it's almost the same hit that, uh, say, the right hand leaves the 4-9. Easy spare, cross lane, extra speed, and he'll only trail by two, by 22. All right. You know, tomorrow on ABC, this week with David Brinkley, an extensive look at the United States-Soviet relations with featured guest Secretary of State Alexander Haig, and a live interview from Moscow with Stanislav Manchikov, spokesman for the Central Committee of the Communist Party. This week with David Brinkley, tomorrow morning at 11.30 Eastern Time. Six frames, Straub. Andy! Oh, yeah. Bill Straub of Lincoln, Nebraska, a farm manager and assistant bowling coach at the University of Nebraska. Chris, he could have, just like a freight train, that shot. He caught it all, just dead square in the pocket, no doubt. I mean, look at those pins. They were just paralyzed. Straub is in the driver's seat now, leads by 22, could put him away with one more strike in the seventh. Yesterday, he defeated Albee 266 to 237 in the position round game to gain the top spot in our live finals today. But the four. He tried to root it in. Bill really jumped on it, gave it a lot of turn, a lot of room, and it looked like it was going to come back, but it didn't make it all the way back to an area where the head pin could do enough damage. The head pin knocked out the seven and five, but didn't catch the four, and with a conversion here, Straub would maintain his 22 pin lead. Bo, how's the other Hall of Famer in your family, Mr. Burton? <laughs> Nelson Sr.'s at yes. home and uh, <laughs> studying these bowlers. This is his style of player. My dad was a power player in his day, a strong man like this, Bill Straub, and he likes to see the guys who turn it up. Then it is a spare as we're going to leave live action here in Florissant, Missouri, but we'll bring you up to date when we return, so don't go away. This is the championship game in the Rolades Open. There's a man here who's driving me mad, but I can't seem to track him down. I'm not in the habit of following men, but he's wearing a fragrance I find absolutely devastating. So if he can't find exactly what he's looking for, I might suggest something. Cambridge, the gentleman's fragrance women find devastating. Edge gel. Nothing shaves closer. Watch this demonstration versus foam using an ordinary credit card. First, I'll shave the left side with foam, the right side with edge. It's the gel that lubricates as it lathers to give you a really close shave. Now listen to the foam side. Then listen to the edge side. See why most men agree. Edge gel lets you shave closer than foam, and nothing shaves closer than edge. You're cutting a ship out of a mountain of steel, and you don't stop until you hear that sound. Hey, man. It's Miller time. Let's go. Miller time. Time to head for the best-tasting beer you can find. 
Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, one beer stands clear. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. Next, Olympic champ Michael Spinks puts his world light heavyweight title on the line against the first-ranked contender. And pool champions are behind the eight ball for trick shot wizardry. ABC's Wide World of Sports is next. Because we're running way behind, they were bowling while we were away. All be coming up with a double in the seventh and eighth frames. One on each lane. Here in the eighth now, Bill Straub, the leader, the tournament leader as well, leaving a nine pin on the right lane. A solid nine, just like we saw Baker leave in the earlier match. Straub has had no really good breaks in this match. He's bowled so well through eight frames. <laughs> Big Bill Straub uh, told me how he's going to try to play the championship uh, pair of lanes. He said he's going to play it somewhere around the third arrow, and uh, he's stuck with that strategy so far. And he's kept it in the pocket. There you see the story visually. Straub needs a strike here in the ninth to keep ahead of the pin count. He's only 21, 11 pins ahead now. He doesn't want it to drop down to 9 or 10 by not striking. Gets what he needed on that left lane. Bill Straub, Lincoln, Nebraska. The Rolaids Trophy is in the form of a plaque. It's beautiful, framed in red, being held by Bert Page, Vice President of American Chickle, makers of Rolaids. There's Bert. Good to have him back, but we do miss... David Wirtz, Vice President of Warner Lambert, parent company, but he's in sunny Puerto Rico. <laughs> Not bad. I'll be with a chance to cut the lead to one. He does it. Imagine that stringing three. Dad's a little uptight. Father Jim Albee looks on. Mike, with a, just a critical strike there, has put himself in a situation where he can still win the tournament. He only trails by one pin. It's just the man who can perform in the 10th frame. One pin difference with a turkey working. Albee can take the lead for the first time in the match with this strike. Had a formidable task in the semifinal game going against Earl Anthony. Bowled a 225 to Anthony's 211. <laughs> Giving a 245 bow. Wow. He really trusted it. He thought he could get it back, but we said this lane's tight. And look at how wide that ball is. It doesn't quite finish. Left a 3-5-6 for a left-hander. That is it. You got to watch you don't chop this. Mm-hmm. Cleaning those spectacles, Bill Straub. He has to make this spare to have any chance of winning. Just gets the three, five, six. Albee with a strike would finish with two, 13. That would make Bill Straub need to spare and seven to win. Almost chops the two, five, three, five, and gets the six out. Not used to seeing those left-handers leave those. They always come back and strike when they're bowling with me. <laughs> That's right. We had three of them in this field of five. And now Straub. Chris, for Bill Straub, the situation is this. If he strikes on this ball, he wins. If he doesn't strike, he needs a spare and a six count to, be, to win his first individual title. He has won a doubles tournament in the Pro Tour, but he's never been a winner on his own. He's a one shot away from that goal right now. Doesn't have it locked up. He needs to make this and get a six count to win. And of all spares for a big power player to leave that is difficult is the 10 pin. Now for the line bowlers or the straight ball bowlers, this is an easy spare for those big crankers. They really have to be sharp to make it. He needs it to win. A spare plus six to win 17,000. Runner up to get 9,500. Really cranked it. Ball. Boy, 
Well, he's just matter of fact about it all. Mike Albee has nothing to be embarrassed about. He's gone through a tough field, but right now, if Bill Straub can get six pins on his last ball, he wins his first individual championship. And Chris, he has bowled so well these first 10 frames. The best he can shoot is 217, but he could have had a much bigger game if he could have had any luck in the carry at all. Here's the shot. And we invite you to stay tuned. The next over most of these stations, WBA World Line Heavyweight Championship. Right here is Burt Page gives Straub the trophy. And, of course, pool champions trick shot wizardry is coming up. And little wizardry all week on the part of Bill Straub, who had a 217 to Mike Albee's 212, a five-pin victory. That's all. So don't forget, Wide World Next over most of these stations. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation.